Hi, my name's Steve Parker and I'm one of the education officers working for Essex Fire and Rescue Service and Essex Police. And today we're going to be talking about summer safety. I spent 30 years as an operational firefighter and we have some unique problems during the summer months which cause us to be caught to a variety of, num of accidents and problems that people get themselves into. So today we're going to be talking about a number of different topics. We're going to be talking about the fire, which is obviously the one that the fire service get caught to most, but also dangers in the water. Uh, if you go to the beach, uh, sun, railways, electricity and home security as well, very important this time of year. The first thing we're going to talk about is fire. Now obviously from a fire and rescue services point of view, we get called to a lot of fires involving uh, the dryness of the summer and that involves fires on heaths, on grassland uh, and on fields and crops. So it's important at this time of year that we take extra care, extra care around um, our use of fire when we're outdoors. So campfires should only be lit with the proper training. So if you're out with the cubs, scouts, brownies, guides, uh, then obviously an adult's going to be with you but we don't want people playing with matches and lighters because fire can spread very quickly during the summer months when things are particularly dry. Uh, fires can spread very quickly and put lives at risk and we've had a number of cases over the last few years where uh, grass fires and fires that have been started deliberately outside have spread into residential properties. Uh, and it is a criminal offence to deliberately start a fire. So if someone does get caught with matches and lighters lighting a fire deliberately, uh, they can be charged with the uh, crime of arson. We can have a little look now at a news clip from a recent fire to show you how quickly that can cause a problem. The new wildfires have broken out around the UK as the heat wave sweeps across the country. This was the scene in East London this afternoon where at least 100 firefighters have been battling to control two separate fires. Elsewhere, blazes have broken out as far afield as Dorset, South Wales, and up in North East Fife as well. This all comes after the Met Office warned of an elevated risk of fires as a result of the tinder dry conditions across the country. The hot spell is now Britain's longest heat wave for seven years, and forecasters say temperatures are likely to be even higher next week. Also today, the Met Office increased its health warning uh, to its highest second level along. So as you can see, uh, with this fire spread, often these fires are started with a single match or a single lighter, sometimes accidentally by the dropping of cigarettes uh, and uh, bonfires that have got out of control, but quite often by young children playing with matches and lighters. So please remember, uh, fire is not a toy, and please make sure that you are extra cautious during the dry weather in, we're having during the summer. The next major problem we have during the summer months is young people going and playing in and around water. Now water uh, and drownings uh, account for a lot of um, deaths in the UK every year. So we're going to just go through some points which are going to help you stay safe around the water. So most importantly, the water can be much colder than you think. And we're going to watch a short film in a minute about what to do in, if you fall into cold water. But basically your body temperature is going to be a lot warmer than the water is. So if you do fall in there, your body's going to go into something called cold water shock and you'll find yourself shivering. <gasps> and when you're having that reaction to the cold water, it's very difficult to be able to swim, even if you're a strong swimmer. So there's going to be some tips in a minute from a video about what to do if you do fall into cold water. Please do not dive or jump into water if you don't know the depths. Now, every year I live in South End, uh, I see children jumping off the jetty uh, into the water, even though the tide is going out. And quite often if I'm there, uh, I go down and see the kids and say, the water is getting shallower, and if you're going to jump in, on, in there, there's a likelihood that you could hit the bottom and cause yourself some serious damage. So be very careful about jumping and diving, especially if you're somewhere where you don't know what's under the water. You can have underwater obstructions uh, and other things under the water that can cause you injury and uh, damage. Um, if you're at the swimming pool or if you're on holiday, lucky enough to be on holiday somewhere that's got a swimming pool, there will be areas that you can dive, but please check the uh, side of the pool and that will give you the depth of the water to see whether it's okay to dive in there or not. Again, if you've got any doubts at all, then speak to an adult. Uh, the rivers and seas can flow very quickly, so we do have particular problems with uh, rivers where, uh, if especially if we've had rainfall, where the river's running very quickly. Uh, and if you do get in there, even if you're a strong swimmer, you can get swept away uh, by the current of the river. Uh, and with the sea, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later, you have got currents running in the sea which can take you out even if you are a strong swimmer. 
and, and please don't don't swim alone. So make sure you buddy up with someone. Ideally, uh, if you're still at uh, primary school, so up to and including year six, you should really be with an adult to make sure that they keep an eye on you uh, when you're actually swimming. So let's have a little, little look at a field now uh, about what to do if uh, we get into trouble falling into cold water. So a really important message there, um, basic message, you fall into cold water, initially try to float on your back for that 60 to 90 seconds while you're, <gasps> <gasps> you're breathing, uh, get your breathing regulated and then you'll be able to swim to the side. If you do try and swim while you're making those initial breaths, while your body's temperature is trying to acclimatise itself to the water, then you have got the, uh, the added problem of perhaps inhaling water. Now I hope you all like the Minions, I know I do, because we're now going to be watching uh, the Minions helping us uh, around, safety around the water in another good film. <laughs> Jones, Australian swimmer and Olympic gold medalist. Now I know a thing or two about swimming and having fun in the water, whether it's in the swimming pool or at the beach, but it's important to always remember to stay safe. So today I have invited my friends to help demonstrate to you guys some important water safety tips. You may recognise them from the movie Despicable Me. planning on swimming or heading down to the water, it's important to always swim with a partner in a group of two or more every time. If one person gets into trouble, it's best to have a buddy nearby who can call for help. <laughs> Playing in and around water is so much fun, but it's important to remember, always have an adult keep watch and know your limits so you don't get into trouble. A smart rule of thumb for non-swimmers is to not go into water any higher than your thigh. If you're a top-notch swimmer, avoid going into water any deeper than your chest. Whenever you're down at the beach, it's always important to stick to the FLAGS method. F-L-A-G-S. Red and yellow flags indicate where it's safest to swim. Look for the safety signs. They are there to warn you of potential dangers of where you should and shouldn't swim. Always look for the lifeguards before you get into the water so you know where to find them if you do get into trouble. Get a friend to swim with you so you can look out for each other's safety and get help if needed. Diving can be very dangerous, so it is important to ask an adult before you dive into any water. You can also check the depth of the water at the pool by looking at the markings on the side. If you do get into trouble when swimming or playing near water, it is important to remember to stay afloat and signal for help. Try to float on your back and use one arm to attract attention. So what should you do if a friend gets in trouble in the water? Lie or sit down and reach out with a stick or throw a rope. Don't get in the water as you might also get into trouble. To make sure you are totally safe in the water, ask an adult to watch you while you swim. I really hope you guys had a fun time with the Minions and learned a few helpful tips about staying safe in the water these school holidays. 
Okay, so we all love the minions and there's a really good bit of advice um, about staying safe around water. And again, it's all sensible things, uh, but don't be overconfident. Even if you're a strong swimmer, uh, as it said in the film there, try not to go out of your depth so that your feet can always touch the bottom if you do get yourself into any sorts of problems. Um, we're going to have a little chat now about um, drowning prevention. Water is fun, but do you know how to stay safe? You need to know the code. S is for spot. Spot the dangers. What's hiding underneath? Is the ground safe? Is the water too deep? Or too shallow? A is for advice. There are things near the water to help you stay safe. Always swim where there's a lifeguard. Read the signs. Learn what the beach flags mean. Wear the right things. F is for friend. If you're going near water, always go with friends or family. It's more fun. And if you get in trouble, then you can help. Always tell someone where you are going. Never swim alone. E is for emergency. Know how to help. Shout as loud as you can. Tell a lifeguard if there is one. Find a phone and call 999. Never go into the water to rescue anyone. It could be unsafe for you. So remember, S is for spot. A is for advice. F is for friend. E is for emergency. Learn the safe home. So really good advice there about preventing drownings and hopefully uh, this summer all of you are going to stay safe around water. We're going to talk a little bit about sun safety now. Now the sun is a big star, it might be 93 million miles away but it's extremely hot and during the summer months, especially in the UK, um, because we're closer to the sun it can burn our skin. So we know we often hear our adults talking to us about making sure that we put on sunscreen uh, especially before and after we've been in the water uh, and before we go out. Staying out of the sun um, during the hottest part of the day, wearing a wide brimmed hat uh, and making sure we're drinking plenty of fluids. So let's have a little uh, look at our sun safety video now uh, to see some of those tips on how to stay safe in the sun. <laughs> Australian swimmer and Olympic gold medalist. As a swimmer and an athlete, I spend a good amount of time out in the sun. Whether it's in the pool, at the beach, or in the park, I just love being outdoors. But today I'm here to tell you the importance of being sun safe this summer. To avoid getting a nasty burn this summer, I've invited a few of my friends, the minions from the movie Despicable Me 2, to tell you all the sun safety tips. I know the minions can be a little bit cheeky, so let's get started. Here are my top five sun safety tips for this summer. Tip one, slip flop flap. Make sure you put on plenty of sunscreen and allow enough time for it to soak in before you go out in the sun. Remember to cover all exposed areas and even the parts hidden away, like the back of the ears and neck and the tops of the hands and feet. Tip two, make friends with your hat. <laughs> Covering up with a hat is the most important way to protect yourself from the sun. A wide brim hat is best because it protects your eyes, ears, forehead, nose and scalp. Also, long sleeve shirts and t-shirts provide the most coverage to protect yourself from getting burnt. Tip three, protect your face. <laughs> It's important to look after your face too. Wearing sunglasses is a great way to protect your eyes from sun damage. 
Remember to look after your lips too by slapping on a good lip balm with sunscreen. Tip four, spend time in the shade. It's fun spending time outdoors in the summer, but it's also important to make sure you have time in the shade especially between the times of 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. as this is when the sun is at its strongest. So try having your lunch inside or under a big umbrella at the beach. Tip five, drink up. We're supposed to drink six to eight glasses of water a day to keep our bodies healthy and happy. But this is even more important when it's hot outside. Don't wait until you're thirsty. Make sure you drink all the time to keep your bodies hydrated. I hope you guys had a great time learning all about sun safety. I know I did, and I think the Minions had a pretty good time too. So remember these five tips to avoid getting a nasty burn when you're outside having fun in the sun this summer. Some great advice there then on our uh, sun safety and making sure that we can enjoy the sun safely this summer. So just remember to drink plenty of water, stay hydrated. Don't wait until you're thirsty to have a drink. Make sure you're sipping water constantly through the day, especially if you're running around with your friends. Uh, try and help prevent sunburn. Make sure you put a sunscreen on. Uh, they have got factors, your adults will know about this, but a high factor, the higher the number, the safer it's going to be for your skin. Also check to make sure that you're not allergic to sunscreens before you put those on. Stay in the shade between 11 and 3. Again, that's when the uh, sun is at its strongest and you're more likely to burn. And always wear a wide brim hat and perhaps a long sleeve shirt as well to stop your ar arms from burning. Follow this advice and you'll be able to enjoy the sun safely this summer. Now, if you're lucky enough to be able to go down to the beach this summer, then there's a few tips as well about staying safe on the beach. Try and swim on a lifeguarded beach where possible and lifeguarded beaches will be displayed and they will have flags on the beach to tell you where it's safe to swim. And the lifeguards will be telling you during the day as the tides change where the safest places to, to swim are and they will generally be, be between the flags. Don't swim on alone again, buddy up with someone. Obviously, uh, I'd like you to be with an adult if you're swimming in the sea. Inflatables in strong winds and rough seas can get washed out. So if you are in a boat or an inflatable ring or a flamingo or something like that and you're on the beach, ideally our recommendation is that you don't use those inflatables in the sea. However, if you are going to use them, uh, please make sure an adult's with you. And if you do find yourself getting out of your depth so you're not able to put your feet on the bottom anymore, please stay in your inflatable. Do not leave it and try and swim back to the beach. Plenty of noise, waving your hands, get somebody's attention and one of the lifeguards will come out and rescue you. Uh, keep an eye on the tide as it's very easy to get cut off. So if you turn up at a beach with your adults and the tide's a long way out and you say, oh, can we walk out to the water's edge? Always keep an eye behind you because that tide can come in behind you and cut you off. And that happens a lot where I live, uh, where people are going out to uh, see the sea and get, get cut off by the tide and every year the lifeguards and the lifeboat need to rescue people who that's happened to. So with beach flags, always swim between the red, red and yellow flags and we're gonna show you some of the flags now that you're going to need to know about on the beach, okay? So the red and yellow flag means lifeguards are on patrol. You should only swim or boogie board in the area between these flags and there will be two of those and you'll be able to swim between those. The red flag means it's dangerous to bathe or swim and you should not go to the water. And the quartered black and white flag indicates the area zone for surf craft and Malibu boards and it's not safe for swimmers. And these areas, again, if you're going to go down to, say, the southwest, maybe Cornwall, you will see these flags. And it is quite dangerous to swim when those surfboards are coming in because it can cause you an injury if you do get hit by those. So just learn those flags and when you're on the beach, uh, if any problems at all, have a word with the lifeguards. Uh, next problem we're going to have a chat about is railways. Now, um, Railway lines are not places to, for children to go and play. They're extremely dangerous. As a fire officer, even if I get called down to the railway line uh, because there's a problem there, uh, we have to wait for all the power to be turned off and to have confirmation uh, that it's safe for our fire officers to go on the railway line. It is extremely dangerous and not a place that children should be playing. Um, we're not going to ignore railway signals and we're not going to trespass on or near the track. And railway electricity is 100 times more powerful than that in the home. So if you look at this picture now, 
Okay, that's maybe what you'll see if you go down onto the railway line. It doesn't look too dangerous. If I now signal up all the problems that we have on that uh, with overhead power lines, third rail, some of these railway lines are actually live, and if you touch that, it can cause serious injury and even death sometimes. Um, and there's buried cables under the uh, ground as well. So if some of your friends are playing on or near the railway lines, please tell them not to. Um, over the summer months, there will be trains going up and down the lines with police officers on. And if they do see children playing on the lines, they will stop and get, get out and uh, take those children home, OK? So please make sure you're not one of them. Uh, electricity can cause us problems. Um, these overhead wires that carry electricity over, if you're flying drones or flying kites uh, and one of them gets stuck up there, please don't be tempted to climb up or try and poke them down with anything. If you're fishing and you're anywhere near these, modern fishing rods can be made of carbon fibre and they can give you an electric shock. The rod doesn't actually have to touch the overhead wire, it can jump. So make sure you stay away from those uh, overhead power lines. Um, and again, these substations which you may have at the end of your road that electricity goes into. Again, if anything goes over there, frisbees, footballs, things like that. Uh, there will be a telephone number on there, but please don't be tempted to climb in those substations. It's extremely dangerous. From a police perspective during the summer, a lot of opportunist burglars are out. And those opportunist burglars are people that are looking for, young, for people that are leaving their windows open, perhaps not locking the doors when they're going out. Maybe it's a very hot day. Uh, and they're walking around and maybe just having a look in the window to see if there's anything worth stealing. So please remember to lock your doors and windows during the summer. It is extremely important because obviously we have lots of high profile and high value items in our homes which can easily be stolen. So uh, the burglaries always rise over the months of the summer and one in three, uh, th sorry, in three out of ten burglaries a burglar will gain access to your home through an open window. And I know it is uh, an extra few minutes before you go out making sure those windows are all shut. And maybe your house will get a little hotter than it would have done. But from a security pr perspective, it's always best to keep those locked. Keep valuables out of view, smartphones, mobile devices, jewellery, car keys, things like that. Uh, we have had an increase on people breaking into properties to steal car keys. So again, it's, it's a good idea to keep those out of uh, view of um, people um, when they're accessing your house. And make sure you have strong locks for your doors and windows and keeps curtains drawn during the day and night, making a burglar think that there is no one at home, okay? And that's another good idea. Now, lots of things to think about there in this presentation um, about staying safe this summer. Make sure you have a fantastic holiday, uh, fantastic summer. This is Steve Parker for Essex Fire and Rescue Service and Essex Police wishing you a great summer holidays. Thank you very much. <laughs>